So welcome back. We're going to do another lesson on percents, percent problems. As you're kind of noticing the last couple lessons, uh, the videos have been a little bit longer uh, because the math is getting a little bit more difficult. So this is probably a good time to transition to the calculator, okay? Uh, a calculator that we would recommend is the TI-30XS MultiView Calculator. You can get it most places for under uh, $20. Uh, like if you like Walmart, you can even probably get online, sh shop at Walmart and have them send it to you or pick it up at the store. A lot of options. I think that the community college bookstore also sells it for right around $20. So, in working with percent problems, what we discovered as, as a good strategy to solve percent word problems is what they call the, uh, the proportion strategy. Remember, percent is based on 100, so the percent over 100 is one side of the proportion, and a percent is close related to a fraction. Remember, a fraction has these concepts of part over whole. So we have the part over the whole as the other side of the proportion. Sometimes I also refer to this as the um, is that method. Because you'll find a lot of times what's next to the is is the part. What's next to the word of is actually the whole. So you can quickly associate that with those two words as well. So let's look at some examples here. What percent of 29 is 3? What percent of 29 is 3? Well, looking at the problem, you know, 3 doesn't look like it's a whole lot of 29, so I'm thinking this percent's got to be kind of small. So what I pick up on is, in my model, I have the percent, which again, we don't know what the percent is. So that's going to be our unknown in this problem, and the percent is always going to be over 100. The part and the whole. We'll always take a percent of the whole. So the 29 is my whole. That's going to go on the bottom. So this becomes my percent. This actually becomes my, um, my whole. It is 3. That's the part that I get. So when I take the percent of 29, I get my part. So that 3 would become the part. So we have our proportion. Now we learned that you can cross multiply. So we have 29 times x, which is 29x. And 10 times 3, we don't need a calculator for that because 3 times 100, we know that that just means add on two zeros. So that becomes uh, 300. But when I get to here, though, x is going to equal, this is where my backwards thinking works. So since this is location, I can find an answer by dividing 300 by 29. And we're actually going to do that on a calculator. So let's see where this takes us on a calculator. So I have 300 divided by 29, hit enter. So this gives me a, a funky little answer. And uh, Let's just round this to what we call the tenths place. So, so I have 10.34, this keeps on going. But if I want to round to the tenths place, that four tells me to round this back to a three instead of rounding it back up to a four. So we'll round that to 10.3 as our answer. So, our answer is going to end up being then 10.3%, actually. So, 10.3% would actually be our final answer because they're wanting us to express this as a percent. And 10.3 over 100 is the same thing as 10.3%. So, we have to include the correct labels. So, this next question what percent of 55 is 34? We again, pick up on it, we take a percent of the whole, so 55 represents the whole, that 34 is our part. So in my proportion, we don't know what the percent is, so that's going to be my x over 100. And then um, my part and whole. The 34 is my part, and that 55 is my, my whole. So now I'm ready to cross multiply, so we have uh, 55 times x. And 34 times 100, again, when you multiply by 100, that just means stick on to zero. So that math is not hard. That's just 3,400. But now I've got to work backwards and divide. So x is going to equal this 3,400 divided by 55. That math, we're going to let technology figure that out for us. 
So 3,400 divided by 55, that's going to give me like 61.8181. So 61.81, and again, it's going to round to about 61.8 if I round to the tenths place. So since we're looking for a percent, we would say 61.8% round into the tenths place. So again, notice how I have a 1 in the hundredths place. That tells me I'm closer to 8 than I am to 9. So we wouldn't round up to 61.9. We would just leave that 61.8. We'd round back down. So next question, we want to find 4% uh, of 73 is what? 4% of 73 is what? Notice this time, this is the percent of 73. That's our, our hole. You take the percent of the hole, and that's going to equal our part. So the part is what's unknown in this problem. So when I set up a portion, the 4%, again, we write just 4 over 100 because that percent symbol is actually what the 100 is. So 4 over 100 represents the 4%. So we can drop that out of there. The uh, whole is 73, and we don't know what the part is. And again, I can let x represent that. So now when I cross multiply, I have 100 times x is equal to uh, 73 times 4. I could probably do that math without a calculator. I can old school it as well. Looks like 292. And then we're going to go 292 divided by 100. And we've learned that dividing by 100 basically means divide by 10 twice. Remember, each zero means dividing by 10. And when we divide by 10, that essentially just means lose a decimal place. So what this is telling me to do is just move my decimal two places to the left. Therefore, my answer would be 2.92. Because you've got to slide that decimal over two places left since you're dividing by 100. So actually, that one really didn't need a calculator. And that's my part. So 2.92 is my answer to that. X equals 2.92. And since that didn't keep on going, I won't round that. I'll just leave that as 2.92. So let's see, what is 12% of 17.5? Again, I have what is 12% of 17.5. There's my percent of 17.5 plus my whole. I must be looking for my part. So what is, notice how there's that is again. That kind of signals that that's the part that we're looking for. So in my proportion, our percent goes over 100. So again, that percent goes over 100. So that 12 goes over 100. Then I don't know what the part is. That's my x. And my whole is at 17.5. So I'm going to have then 100x equals and 12 times 17.5. I'll let the calculator do that. We're getting 210. And then I got to divide by 100. So 210 is being divided by 100. And we know that dividing by 100 is just moving the decimal two places to the left. So I really don't need my calculator for that. That's going to change it to 2.1. So x equal 2.1 would be my answer to that one. I may want to circle that since that's getting kind of busy. So let's look at example 5 here. 112 minutes is 76% of what? So we have 112 minutes is 76% of what? So it looks like I have those three pieces again. The part, there's my percent, and there's my uh, whole. So again, I can use my proportion and substitute in. 76% is going to be 76 out of 100. We uh, know the part this time. That's 112. Remember the, the parts in the top of the, the proportion, top of the fraction, the part is up there. The whole this time is what we don't know. So if we play this math out, we end up with a cross multiply, we get the 76 times x this way. I always like to multiply the, the diagonal that has the variable in it. So this crossing, I always like to do the one with the variable. I always like the variable on the left side. It just makes the math work better for me. So 100 times 112, we know that if you multiply by 100, that just means stick on two zeros. 
send me 112 with two zeros. So that's going to be 11,200. And we know that then we just have to divide these two numbers here. So that says to go 11,200, and we're going to divide that by 76. And that's just going to be, again, a strange number. So on the calculator, I'm getting like 147.36. So 147.36, we're going to round that to 147.4. So we'll go ahead and round that to 147.4 since it's, that 6 kind of tells me to move that 3 on up. So you might want to have yourself a calculator handy to look at these as well along with me. This last example, 16 inches is 35% of what? 16 inches is 35% of what? Notice how again we can kind of pick up on the part whole and percent thing. So our percent always goes over 100, so that's 35 over 100, and the part is the 16, that goes on the top, the whole is the unknown. So when we cross multiply, we should see that we have 35 times x, so we multiply that diagonal, we get 35 times x. When I multiply this way, I get 100 times 16, that's going to be 16 and two more zeros. So it's going to be 1,600. But to get my answer, I still got to divide. So I'm going to divide that 1,600 is being divided by that 35. And again, we get some strange number. I'm getting like a, a 45.71, and it keeps on going. So right to the, the tenths place, 45.71, that's going to round to 45.7. So 45.7 would be the result to that one. Okay. So notice that when I do percent problems like these, I kind of circle my pieces, and that helps me set up my format. So the percent of the 100 is equal to the part over the whole. Also, we have that is of as a tool to solve problems that look like this. Okay, so that concludes. Uh, stay tuned.